In all the millennium that I've lived, I never believed that someone from an alternate dimension would reach out to me. Or something as simple as the celebration of the birth of a mortal, even. Preposterous. This should begin with my regards to Samantha. I suppose. Happy birthday. Now that the important part of this thing is out of the way, I will properly introduce myself. I am the Gatekeeper, the god of time and space in my dimension, and the caretaker of the underworld. I pondered on what I could discuss during the remainder of this time. After all, this is not simply a birthday gift. This is a way of promotion, a way to allow everyone the access of information regarding our world. And quite frankly, I could insult the woman this is dedicated to senseless and she would still enjoy this. In fact, she might even relish it. Maybe I should insult her. <laughs> I was never one to be rude. I will refrain from doing that. Instead, I will mention the days of celebration of us gods. In our dimension, gods have days of celebration rather than what mortals call birthdays. My day of celebration is on December 21st, the day when the chill at winter and my power is at its strongest. Just nine mortal days ago was the celebration of Satoru. He is the Therian god and my counterpart. He is strongest when the heat of the mortal world is at its peak. That isn't to say that the entire world of Elysia is a place of peril, where people fall left and right of heat strokes in the summer and frostbite in the winter, although that certainly happens in certain areas of the world. Andromeda, the home country of Cronists and the race that most resembles me, is known to be quite rebellious with its seasons. Meanwhile, in Ophelia, the seasons aren't nearly as intense for the entire country as they are for some of the home countries. Perhaps I could give a geography lesson. That would be useful. Yes, well, I will show you all a map of the planet in question known as Elysia. Here in the center of this large piece of land is what is known as the Lake of Youth. No one can access the Lake of Youth, at least not mortals. If you go northwest from the Lake of Youth, you will run into what is known as the Regalian Peninsula. Since they say creatures known as Sirens live there, people tend to avoid that area. But the country of Rigel is the home country of vampires. Rigel is a tundra. It rarely rains, there are no rivers, and the only forest you'll find in Rigel is the forest that leads to the Cielan Woods, which is where the Lake of Youth is located. If you were to head northeast, you would run into Nova, the country of wizards. The Cielon Woods are located on the outskirts of eastern Nova's capital, Cielon. As a side note, it should be important to mention that the Cielon Woods were once known as the Asgardian Woods. However, Rigel and Nova have been known to wage war constantly against each other, ultimately leading to a different leader of the woods every decade or so. The entire thing is quite petty, but typical of mortal behavior. Just above Nova are the Great Glaciers, known for their deadly temperatures. No one lives there, but many have attempted to take the challenge of reaching the top of Mount Olympus, the tallest mountain in the Great Glaciers. It is said that those who reach the top receive the blessings of the Goddess of Life, destined to do great things. I have been told that I can neither confirm nor deny this. South of the Lake of Youth is the Therian country Baishamin. The country is relatively peaceful, at the very least in comparison to Rigel and Nova. They are the only country that follows the regular weather patterns that occur because of us gods. Rigel is in an eternal state of frost, and while Nova does follow typical weather patterns for the most part, they also have the glaciers and desert. This large island all alone is Andromeda. It is the most tropical of all the countries, and have the second best hot springs after Baishamin. Andromeda is known as the least wealthy country, though it is quite beautiful. Both Baishamin and Andromeda are fans of familial bonds and the like. Lastly, the large piece of land to the west is Ophelia. 
Ophelia is technically a home country of humans, but the entire country is a mixture of all the races at this point. It is divided into four areas. The Ophelian Desert, Ophelian Jungle, Coastal Ophelia, and South Ophelia. South Ophelia follows regular weather patterns, but Coastal Ophelia is similar to Andromeda. The Ophelian Desert and Jungle are self-explanatory with their weather. Both Ophelia and Bajaman have smaller islands south of the mainland, though they are of little importance, at least right now. Nova also has an island to the west, though just as the other islands have little significance, this one does not either. I do hope I've not bored anyone to death with this little geography lesson, but quite frankly, I had no idea what else to talk about. At this point, all I have left to say is the fact that the prologue should be coming by the end of the year, although the creator said that once before as well. If you enjoyed spending time with me, I do recommend you support this project in future endeavors. If you've yet to see the last promo, it may be to your benefit to get to know the voice actors of this project. Once again, happy birthday, Samantha. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you all again in the future.